In this episode, we talk about the four types of corporate social responsibility, including environmental or sustainability, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, corporate philanthropy, and supply chain. And we're starting right now. Hi everyone, I'm Carl. Welcome to The Social Impact Show, where CSR professionals get the latest strategies and tactics to help develop and grow their CSR and goodness programs. Now remember, if this is your first time on this channel and you want to get the latest strategies from the experts, hit the subscription button below, hit the little notification bell so you don't miss anything. Now today I'm joined by uh, with Nicole Campbell, CSR expert, and we are going to talk about what are the four types of corporate social responsibility. So Nicole, what? let's go over these four types. So first of all, there's more than four. Okay. So you're completely wrong. <laughs> okay. um, and I think some companies will even expand more than, I, I say there's usually five or six, but some companies okay. even have more. Um, so we've talked about this in other videos that CR, or corporate responsibility, and some of the components of it are often used interchangeably. So um, some companies will refer to their CR program that's basically just the employee engagement aspect of it, employee giving and matching, when really there's a lot of other components that are supposed to be working um, with one another to have a really comprehensive and integrated strategy. So to talk about the components, if um, that's what you're looking for, there is, so DE&I, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so this is hiring practices, making sure that um, a company is inclusive, um, and equitable, uh, as well as ensuring that they are also trying to educate and up-level the, the information that their own people have around this very topic. So unconscious bias training, as an example. Um, then we have supply chain. So just ensuring that companies are ethical and the vendors and suppliers that they're working with, because as you know, um, Pro-social behavior extends not just within the company walls, but who you're working with. And you can really role model those positive behaviors and support communities by having an ethical supply chain process. Then we have um, environmental or sustainability. So this is how companies are reducing their uh, urban footprint. And then they can even engage their people in these actions. So having no waste campaigns or ride a bike to work campaigns. So you can do it from a corporate level, but also from the employee level. And this is why all of these um, various components of CR interrelate. Then we have uh, employee engagement. So this would be employee giving and volunteering, um, engaging people in, uh, campaigns around, like we talked about before, environmental things, even though that fits within an employee engagement team. And then we have corporate philanthropy. So these are large sums of money typically given to organizations in a strategic way. So often these are aligning to the company's core values or purpose or what they're doing as a business, like core competencies. And this can look like dollars. It could look like product donations. Um, um, so for instance, if you work for a big software company, maybe you are donating that software for not, to not-for-profits as an example. Um, and then uh, the last is governance and governance looks a little bit different between um, companies, but sometimes it's just um, the legal requirements to give back and do various things that it's, it's more of a fiduciary duty. So those are the four components. Um, some companies have one or two, some of them have all. And then the, other, the tricky thing is sometimes these fit under one leader or a foundation, but then in a lot of companies, they are on disparate teams and they're not working together. And that is a huge opportunity to sort of pull those threads together to have a more cohesive strategy. So for larger organizations or larger CSR programs, let's say there would be, I guess, different people or different, I don't know, teams running every single one of these types, right? Yeah. Ideally, in a, in a perfect world, they all sit under a vice president or um, a senior leader who's ensuring that the teams are working together with a shared strategy, even though they might have their own individual um, goals and things like that. Uh, but in more cases than not, typically because CSR programs have evolved over time with more money and more expectations from the communities and um, their employees, that they're adding these teams in a more responsive way 
in various business units that have the money to support them and they're not even talking to each other. So I've, I've been in companies who have a sustainability team who is not working with the employee engagement team. Oh my gosh, imagine if they pulled those pieces together and doubled down on some of the work that they were doing, it would be incredible. So let, let's go back. Let's say you don't have a large CSR program or you're just starting out. How would one go about incorporating these six types into their program or do you maybe start with one or two and then build it out? Yeah, it, I think it's an awareness thing because I think too, now there are corporate social responsibility practitioners that have gone to school for it or not even have just been doing it for a long time and they've seen what CSR should actually be versus these little programs kind of budding in companies over time and growing without having a clear focus of where they need to be. So now if you're a CSR practitioner, you know these are the components, this is where you wanna get, and then you can start highlighting this with your leaders and maybe you start with one or two, but you recognize the end goal is to get to all five or six. And I think that's easier to um, have that eye on the prize versus working backwards and trying to like fill in some of the gaps. And if I were to start with a couple, it really depends on where your company's at and what they need. So employee engagement is a huge aspect of it and something that if you're looking at these programs from um, not just doing good, but a brand perspective, your employees are the people in the communities volunteering and building relationships with not-for-profits. And, um, you know, people are seeing your t-shirts out in the community as an example. So like an employee engagement is a huge opportunity to scale some of that stuff. Corporate philanthropy. I mean, if you're a growing company and you should just be thinking about giving a percentage of your um, pre-tax revenue. So as you grow, you've already built that into how you run your business. Those ones are really great. And any sort of environmental aspects to your program, DEI, those you can include too. It doesn't have to be a huge, big initiative in the beginning, but just having the mindset and a few um, initiatives around it can really take you further than um, you might expect. I, I would imagine employee engagement and corporate philanthropy would probably be the first two to, to, to go out because I don't know. I, I can't say if they're the easiest, but they're the first ones that are like most apparent. The one that I would, I'm kind of interested because of my background in this is supply chain. Could you go a little bit deeper into the supply chain aspect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, to your point, if you focus on philanthropy and the employee engagement aspect of it, you can pull in threads of DE&I. So you could have affinity networks that are volunteering with organizations like that support Black Lives Matter, as an example, or um, the environmental piece too. You can run campaigns through your employees that are still doing things that are green and sustainable. So that's a really good point. Um, from a supply chain perspective, that is typically done through, um, it's a compliance thing. So as an example, some companies won't even work with a partner unless they are a certified B Corp. Um, and B Corp is a set of criteria that makes you be, um, you know, known as a socially responsible company as one example. Others say they're working with um, suppliers overseas. They want to make sure that there's no, you know, child slavery going on and some of those really terrible things that they don't want to support. And so they can be ethical in who they're sourcing as their partners as part of their corporate responsibility program. Because yeah, sort of when, when, when I think of supply chain, I think of more the traditional supply chain, right? From creation to getting to your door, right? But yeah, it, it's a very interesting component of, of the, the six types that you outlined here. And remember, if you are getting value from this video, make sure to hit the like button below. And the question of the day I have for you is, how have you used any of these types in your programs and what were the results? Let us know in the comment section below. So Nicole, I guess the last part I wanna to touch on is the environmental and sustainability part. And I know in previous videos, we've talked about um, the ESG component of CSR, but how does the environmental and sustainable part play into CSR because from um, my experience in previous organizations or even um, just thinking about different organizations, wouldn't they have their own environmental and sustainability programs that are maybe outside of CSR? Yeah, so 
sometimes the sustainability is one of those other ones that's used interchangeably. The thing is, if you have an environmental or sustainability team working in your company that's not aligning to the broader CSR goals, it's just a lost opportunity there. Um, you can really, again, double down on some of these initiatives. And as an example, if you are um, at an organizational level trying to use less um, electricity and use less waste within your company and buying, say, if you have 90,000 employees not buying reusable cups for your kitchen, those small decisions can actually be... Um, can be coupled with employee related programs and engagement programs that their people are running and leading and facilitating um, and advocating for similar things. So it just gives you that sort of like extra support without the extra team if you think critically about it. Um, and I, <laughs> I think that these two are big advocates of the environment too, based on how they're dancing right now. Um, so yeah, I feel like that piece should be wrapped into CR. It shouldn't be separate. And while it can be facilitated and like oversaw or overseen by um, a different leader, they should be work together at minimum. So do you have anything else to add in terms of the six types that you discussed today? No, I think, I think that pretty much covers it. I feel like you could just do some research on all of those, but I think just recognizing there are more than one or two components of CSR is a really great first step. So if you want to know more about the benefits of corporate social responsibility, you got to check out this video here, as well as this playlist to learn how to build a corporate social responsibility program from scratch. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next episode.